We are recording. Yes, we are recording. Hello, I am Dr. Vicki St. Pierre coming to you from Sackville, New Brunswick, Canada. And today, uh, Dr. Denise Ritter Bernardini and I are going to be discussing um, perhaps some pointers and some tips on how to sing with an orchestra. And because we have varying uh, degrees of experience uh, with all different sorts of orchestras, we thought we'd maybe um, do this little masterclass together. <laughs> yes. So Denise, <laughs> Denise, why don't you start us off with <laughs> okay. uh, with some main pointers with some main ideas? Okay, so let me ask you a question. When was the very first time you sang with an orchestra? Do you remember? Uh, it was probably one of my first gigs, my first professional gigs, but um, I think I sang, we, we did some work with an orchestra in my, I want to say my undergrad, and it might have been choral. I don't really remember that much. Right. We did excerpts of Messiah, and I did uh, several or one or two of the alto solos. So that would have been probably my first experience singing with uh, with an orchestra. Right. I feel like that's probably what most people's experience is. Right. They they have some sort of choral experience as being one of the chor choristers. Right. And they and if it's a professional kind of thing where it, it might be at their school, but they've invited some singers, some soloists to come in right? You see those soloists come in for the very first time and maybe yeah. you're like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> anyway, maybe that's what makes you decide, you know, or maybe you're like, oh my God, that's so scary. How are they doing that? And maybe it's a little of all of that, Yeah. but it, it is a very different animal, right? When you're singing with a choral group, yeah, for sure. And, uh, and you are, thinking about, uh, you know, coming in at the same time as everybody else and all of that, then to walk out there and be in front of that group. And uh, a lot of undergrads don't get that kind of experience. You're lucky if you got to do the excerpts, right? And do, you know, a solo you know, if you're a soprano, yeah. I rejoice, or for you, uh, one of those other things. What is it you sing in the song? <laughs> I don't even know. Because at that point, I'm like thinking about all what the really good pieces to eat for dinner really and what I'm going to drink when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not listening to you. <laughs> not true. Thinking about what to sing next and how you're going to create the most beautiful, wonderful sound on the next yes. thing. Yes, and for yeah. the soprano and the Messiah, I'm thinking, holy shit, this is a long time to wait. By the time I sing that stupid song, I'm going to be uh, <coughs> needing to warm up again. Thank you very much, Handel. I, I think that's the, the case with, I think every soprano feels that in Messiah, for sure. I've sat <laughs> beside a number of them who are sort of humming along with the choruses. And the, yes. You know, on, oh, yes. Uh, on the way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> How yeah. about you? What was your first uh, orchestra experience? You know, I think it was Rudder's Requiem. Oh, I love that piece. Yep. Uh, Rudder's Requiem. I, I was one of the only sopranos in my choir who could float those stupid little high notes. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> like a boy soprano. Oh, I love that. You know, that. in the That's English so style. <laughs> I couldn't do that now to save my stinking life. I'd have to gird my loins with the, <laughs> I don't know, maybe some duct tape. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. On that, uh, yeah. Kind of anything so you know we're good yeah that was the first time and um uh, I think we got one rehearsal with it yeah and I just remember being very afraid mm -hmm. but once once I sang it you know it, it was better but you know it also depends on your your conductor and if you trust them or not yep so then I very trusted him. Time. You have very little time to put those things together. So that initial meeting is really, really important uh, to suss out what that person wants and how yep. you are going to be able to give it to them and also maintain your musical integrity and how you want to present something. The older you get, the more of what you want to do is actually important and um, yeah. Uh, listened to, I guess, right? Acknowledged. 
Yes, uh, and not right. everybody, but certainly the, the the older I get and the more of these I do, the more input I have and the more I can say that's actually too fast or that's actually too slow for how I would like to musically do this. And rather than just make it through, I'd love to do this really musically and I think your audience is going to get a lot more out of it. Right. I so, think when you're young, they go, hmm, you're going to yeah. follow me because you're pretty inexperienced. So you just yeah. do what I tell you to do. But then as you gain more experience and your, your resume has more things on it and they've chosen you because they've heard you before. Right. I, I mean, that's been the majority of my career has been people who heard me do something else or, or somehow I, I did something for them one time and then it was more than that one time. Yeah. And, and as they trust you also, then you have right. the ability to have much more input. Mm -hmm. uh, what, do, what do you do when you, it's a first time, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are when it's a very first time and you realize that that person just can't really conduct. <laughs> I, <laughs> or you I can't follow them. Like I maybe they can conduct. Them. I don't watch them. I watch the concert master. And usually I'm, I'm near the concert master anyway. Um, and you can watch yes. peripherally or feel what they're doing um for downbeats for entrances for cutoffs for a tempi things like that and if especially if you're really near the concert master or yeah if you can um lead them a little bit too and if they like you then you can you can really move them along um or slow them down however uh however you want them to do that and it's it's a good it's always good to get along well with your concert masters for any gig really, but the ones especially where you just, I have no idea what's happening on the podium. And I think, I don't, I don't know where you are. I don't know where we are, but I know where the concert master is. So here we go. Yeah. Uh, I've, I have said at times, okay, so I'm going to just watch you out the corner of my eye. Mm -hmm. Don't worry if I, you don't see me looking to right. I, I have yeah. really great peripheral vision. <laughs> And then I don't pay any attention to that fool ever yeah. again, right? Yeah. I, I count like crazy and listen like crazy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the very first Carnegie Hall thing that I ever did, the guy conducted like swatting flies. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what the hell is going to happen <laughs> <laughs> I, was I, like, like, okay. I like the circles when you're like, where, yeah. where in there am I supposed <laughs> to come in to that? And you can see that the orchestra is also not following that. So they're, they're no. just following the concert master. All eyes go to the concert master. And yeah. that's, then that's when I know, oh, okay, you don't watch him either. So that's, that's good. Really and notice her. we've not said her. <laughs> Rarely, because rarely her that, that, that this sort of thing applies to. <laughs> yes. Although I did know one female opera director who's not, no, I don't think she's even any longer conducting. Uh, it, it, she would come into rehearsals and, and uh, performances completely drunk. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, and this was her thing. Oh. Uh, I don't uh, know. It was the claw. But anyway, so she but she I have to say she's the only female that really I didn't think she this girl can this yeah. girl can do it yeah I no problem I work with several really phenomenal uh women conductors I I love 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 working with them and women leaders as well so my experiences are probably a little different than yours in that a lot of early music bands will have the violinist uh, as concertmaster leading the orchestra from the violin. So there isn't a conductor. And um, that, that's a whole other thing too. And there's the, the, but the conversations that are had are enlightening. They're so musical and it's so, um, it's engaging and, uh, and there's a lot of collaboration that goes on in those uh, circumstances. And I've worked with a few women who lead in that way. And it's, it's a wonderful experience, especially the older that I am, the older that I am, I, I'm able to participate more in the, sort of the real musical side of things. I have opinions. I, I know how I want something to go and I've really put the research in and the work in to know why it is that that's happening. Right. Wait, did you say you have opinions? 
<laughs> Hardly any. <laughs> you know, and some I, are not strongly held. People can sway me really, really easily. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, um, you are not self-aware. But anyway. <laughs> I digress. You know, you're lucky in that. I wish that when I was younger, someone had said you should sing a lot of early music. I, I think it would have fit my voice better um, when I was young, for sure. Yep. Maybe yep. not so much now, but but when I was young, for sure. But I think, unfortunately, in most schools, the thrust is mainstream opera, right? Like Verdi and Puccini yep. and Mozart and all of that. And so I was just thrown right into... Well, a lot of Minotti at first, and then and then later Verdi and some Mozart. But I wish I had had that early music experience. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in that mainstream opera experience, men are mostly the directors. I've yeah. probably only had three women directors in my life. Wow. And and so I I I wish that I had had more of those experiences and oh. and uh, yeah. If so different in a lot of really wonderful ways it's different and i've worked yeah. with wonderful male conductors too like it's you know oh sure sure sure, sure. Yeah. but but boy um i think it's the conversation that can happen uh and the um and the the, the need for collaboration they they want they want a collaborative right. effort the ones that i've worked with and i really appreciate that they right. still have their opinions and they're still going to hold strong to something that they want to have happen, but they listen and it's really, it was, re it's really fun. You know, there's a funny little story about Montserrat Cabaret, Cab Caballet. I, I don't know if she, Cabaret, where did that come from? Oh, I know. I do oh. a lot of that. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, uh, and there's a story about her and I can't swear that it's her, but there's a story that goes around about her saying to a, a conductor, He'd say, you know, Montserrat, could you please not hold that note so long? Could we move that along? And she'd go, oh, yes, maestro. Yes, maestro. Mm -hmm. And then when it came time for the performance, she did whatever the hell she wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think when you're Montserrat Caballé. Yeah, you I was can about to that. say, yeah. you can do that when you're Montserrat Caballé. But you can't <laughs> do that when you are starting out or, no. well, for that matter, when you're Dr. Denise Ritter Bernardini, because they get pissed and never use you again. So, if you want to work, you really have to figure out how to make uh, things successful and make that uh, conductor believe that you're doing everything that he or she is telling you to do. Mm -hmm. and, and you should try to do that to a certain extent, but not to the detriment of your own vocal right. health. Yeah. Or uh, your own your own success and feeling like you haven't uh compromised some essence of yourself to achieve it right yeah so i think too one of the things that that i'm sure you do with your students but i try to do with mine is to remind them to prepare in at various tempi and yes with various colors and uh make sure that all of the colors are the way that that we've worked on to adjust um you know nuance in a voice that will not hurt the voice but in fact is just is part of how they produce their sound that's and that's healthy um and the tempi thing is is a really 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 good um example of how to prepare for pretty much all eventualities because i mean let's take messiah for example i've sung 125 solo messiahs and now that that has given me probably about 125 different tempi on various <laughs> arias right yeah and it's gone from you know let's let's take oh thou that tell us good tidings to zion from ding dum bum ba dum bum and you think oh this is never going to end I'm never going to make it to the end. Believe of this. me, we all think that. <laughs> we, die, we die here. This is it. I'm sorry, everyone. You now live at the theater. But <laughs> the other side of that is that sometimes you get and you have to sing 16th notes in there. And, and you think, well, I'm, they're not going to be clean and they're not going to be clear, but I'll do my best. And sometimes that's the concession is that you'll do your best. And Oh, yeah. You can't control, ultimately, when that conductor puts the baton down, you can't control the tempo of 
however many people there are behind you. Right. 25, 30, 35, 50, you know, you can't control that. And the conductor can barely control that. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I used to every, every year sing with the same orchestra, uh, a Messiah. It was like an annual event. It was for two nights in a row. And that director each night was different. Oh, oh, well, that's it was never, exciting, never right? the same. <laughs> And, and there was one time when he played Rejoice so fast that uh -huh. I thought, I, I, I'm going to slur. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the only way I'm going to get through this is to just slur it like it's a <laughs> roller coaster ride, right? But I remember looking at him and going, yeah. <sighs> okay, we're going to do it that like that. Today. Here we go. Here we go. Here's everyone. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. I'm going to hit the high notes. <laughs> That's all you need. Right? I'm just going to head to those. You just hit the high notes. Just hit just the high notes. I'm just going to head to them. I'm just going to head to them as best I can. <laughs> and when we were over, he looked at me like, oh, we did it. Like he knew. He knew, yeah. but he could yeah, not yeah. slow that mother down once it started. No. He couldn't. No, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. Yeah. Yeah. And so every tempo possible, realize. practice every tempo possible. And the sooner you realize that it could go any speed, uh, literally any speed, um, the sooner you uh, come to terms with the fact that every performance of it is not going to be the optimal speed for you. And so it's not going to be the optimal performance for you. So then <clears throat> limiting those expectations or making new expectations about, well, how can I make this then the best performance that it can be is actually a really important turning point in my brain. I remember in a couple of, of professional gigs where I thought this isn't going to be perfect. I mean, it's never going to be perfect, but I'm, I'm going to have to lower my expectations of what I'm going to be able to do because the tempi is, is an issue. Tempo is an issue. Um, and <clears throat> that's it was really good for me to do that and the other really good thing that happened to me among my first few professional gigs was uh i, I remember a tenor and a bass that walked out in a messiah performance and sang the absolute snot out of their arias and their recitatives and then i had to get up and sing and i thought ah this is what it is to have to step up a level to see what the real professionals are doing the older professionals and how they're getting there and how they're preparing for it so i picked all the brains and i you know i, I tried really hard to um to learn from my older colleagues when i was a younger colleague when i looked and saw like wow that is that is a whole other level higher and i was singing fine that wasn't the issue that's it's just a whole other level of prep and understanding and subtext and preparation and and everything and I was so glad that I talked to the people that I talked to and they were giving and caring and lovely people. And now I've become <laughs> not the youngest on the gig anymore, <laughs> which is a little hard to take, but that's okay. This is the passage of time. Um, yes. And then I've had younger students or younger, sorry, younger singers and colleagues uh, ask me those questions too. So it's, uh, you, you come yeah. full circle. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I don't do messiahs anymore. Um, I, I quit doing them about two years ago and uh, mostly because after over a hundred of them, what, what's the point other than the money, right? Mm -hmm. But really, unless they want to start paying me by the note, I'm not seeing that sucker anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. I just don't, I don't want to do it anymore. I, I'd rather do some other things. But uh, one of the things that I uh, think about when I'm trying to prepare myself and or student to sing with an orchestra is I, it, it's really hard, I think, for young uh, up and coming singers who have done, you know, undergrad and masters with small chamber things or, and or they've sung a lot of art song and they just don't know the beast of singing with an orchestra quite yet. Mm -hmm. And helping them to figure out that even in their own vocal technique, that can be very different, yeah. right? Like singing an art song, you, you can be breathy here and there. You can... Yeah. You can um, give yourself some nuance in and play with resonance and where you resonate. And because it's, that's these little 
moments of paintings and art, right? Like art song. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to singing with an orchestra, you have to be sure that every note that you sing on the pages resonates in that place that will cut through that orchestra, right? And that's a very different kind of preparation. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that I like to tell my young singers who are about to go out and do that for the first time is record yourself. Yes. Listen, shut your eyes and listen to every note you sing. And if you don't hear that very sympathetic, um, distinct resonance that sounds a little metallic, figure out how to get, I mean, I'll help yep. you do that too in your lessons. Obviously. When you're not in your lessons, try to figure out how you can make that note, whether it's the bottom of your range in that piece to the top of your range and all the things in the middle that give you, you know, nightmares at night, that middle part <laughs> of voice, at least for sopranos, not for you people, but <laughs> you people, <laughs> you people, <laughs> we are few, but mighty Denise. <laughs> yes, I know. Anyway, when you get there, you know, you have to think about that resonation. You can't just click out and go, Oh, I want to be artistic. Nobody's yep. going to give a crap about the artistry if they didn't hear it. Yeah. And there's, there's space for in, I think to, I, I, to echo what you're saying, essentially there's space in an art song because the piano can give you space or the yes. lute can give you space. Uh, and there's a lot there of silence where you can fill that silence with really small nuancey things. There is place and there is space in orchestra in or orchestral music as well, but sure. It, few and far between and for the most part you still have a texture that you're singing over essentially so right. if you're singing with just like a little bit of winds instruments with you sure. that's a different sound than if you're <clears throat> singing with mostly brass or with all string or with whatever so um but that sort of all sound all the time idea with only a few um places to really shape and, and bend things the way that you would want to bend them um, right. is super, super important. Yeah. Sickle recitative, that's a different thing, right? You, yeah. you have those silences and you can do a, some nuance, but once that orchestra. that orchestra cranks in and you're in the aria, you better be sure that all that resonation, wherever you need it, is lined up and that you're singing <clears throat> in a way that will cut through that orchestra. Yep. You, you cannot, um, you cannot relax that at all. I mean, it has no, to be. You can't your way through. Nope. No, no. Nope, or use air for volume. It's not going to no. happen. You got to yeah. think about resonance, 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 resonance. Yeah. So. Yep, well, exactly. what's our last thing we want to say? Because people are probably sick of us or will be sick of us at this point. <laughs> I don't know. I think we're very entertaining. <laughs> well, of course we are. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, my last, the thing that I tell my students probably more than anything else is uh, preparation. And the preparation that you do for um, maybe a song that you're never going to actually perform in your lesson is nowhere near the prep that you're going to need to do for making sure that um, you understand what the texture is going to be. Uh, what's the solo instrument before you come in? Um, is there a solo instrument? Uh, is there a solo instrument in the middle of this? Is it one of those obligato arias where you are essentially in a duet? Uh, what's the continuo section like? How thick? How thin? Um, for me, that's obviously, this is the, the early music side of things, but I don't only sing early music. I sing Mahler and I sing Men Mendelssohn and I sing, you know, whatever. But it's... Um, it's knowing what the texture is. It's understanding the historical context. It's understanding how to sing this in style. It's understanding uh, what the ornamentation is going to be, if there's going to be any, and um, the prep of getting into the voice, the prep of getting it um, so well learned that even though you have your book in front of you, you don't need your book, um, so that you can actually tell the story to the, to the audience. All of this to say, how can you and the orchestra work together to tell the story? Right. <clears throat> um, agreed. That's, that's really good. Very good advice, I think. Uh, I, I was going to say one last thing. Um, I don't remember what it was. You kicked it right out of my head. 
<laughs> just that brilliant. Yes. I had hair, I'd fling it around right now. <laughs> Maybe yes. I'll just extra spike it. There yes. we go. That's you, you do that, but in other ways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. All right. Here we are. Fantastic. So nice to see you, Dr. St. Pierre. And you too, Dr. Bernardini. And uh, I hope that we can do uh, another one of these again in the near future. I think it's pr probably at least entertaining, if not somewhat helpful <laughs> to people. Yes, I hope I can figure out how to um, send this over to Facebook. I'm sure you can. I, I okay. believe in you. I believe All in right. you. All Good. right. Yay. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.